Our New Testament reading this morning comes from the book of John, chapter 1, beginning at verse 43. Hear the word of God. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? <coughs> Can anything good come from there? Nathanael said. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You shall see greater things than that. Then he added, I tell you the truth, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for these scripture readings this morning from the Old Testament, the story of young Samuel here in your call. And from the New Testament, the story of Nathaniel here in your call. We pray that our hearts would be open, sensitive to your voice, so that we might hear your call. Speak to us through these words, these scriptures. Lord, open up our eyes to the truths they hold. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, there are uh, times in life when our spiritual ears are a little bit more sensitive. One night, a young man named Peter decided to take a, a shortcut across the Scottish Moors. It was a foggy night. He was a, a confident, brash young man, not worried about his own security as he rambled there through that darkness. Suddenly he heard something. What was it? Almost sounded like somebody was calling out his name. Who's there? He cried out. He walked a few more steps and then he heard it again. He turned and when he turned he stumbled. And so he reached out to give himself some leverage with his hand, and he discovered there was nothing in front of him. He had stumbled, stumbled at the edge of a cliff, and down below was this limestone quarry. Knowing that something or someone stopped him one step short of death, his spiritual ears opened up. Deep within his spirit, he felt God's hand upon his shoulder and God's voice speaking to his heart. That was a day of transformation for this young man named Peter. Peter Marshall. Peter became one of the best known and effective Presbyterian ministers since the turn of the 20th century. Eventually, he became a pastor in the New York Avenue Presbyterian Church and in Washington, D.C. He served as the United States Senate chaplain. Then he became world famous with the success of his biography written by his wife, Catherine Marshall, entitled A Man Called Peter. Has anybody ever read that, that book, Betty? <clears throat> and a couple over there. So you know who I'm talking about. God called Peter that night on the Scottish War. He had stumbled and he discovered himself to be on the edge of death, but also on the edge of life. His spiritual ears tuned in. His spiritual eyes were wide open, like young Samuel in our Old Testament reading. God called out to Peter Marshall and he heard God's voice. Now I'm sure in the early stages, in the early phase of the beginning of that new life, Peter asked what are you trying to say to me, God? Why did this happen to me? Where are you going to lead me? What's next in, in the step of this new life? Young Samuel felt the same way when God called out to him. He knew 
knew something was going on, something different was happening, but he wasn't sure what. He was lying down, young Samuel, in the tabernacle of the Lord near the Ark of the Covenant when God called out his name. He immediately went to the priest, Eli. He asked Eli, well, did you call me? And he, Eli didn't know what was going on, so Eli sent him back to bed, and that happened three times. And finally, he, and Eli understood what was going on. God was speaking to this young Samuel's heart. <laughs> and he said to him, just be still and listen to God's voice. Listen to God. So, so young Samuel was on the edge of discovery. I think back on my own life to similar circumstances to Peter Marshall and to young Samuel. There were times in my own life when I was on the edge. I was either going to tumble over that edge in the wrong direction or I was going to listen to that voice. A couple of months ago, a college friend of mine by the name of Frank Ferguson passed away. He had several health problems. But I'll tell you how I first met Frank. I was sitting in my dorm room, a, a freshman in college. I had been doing all the things that young guys do when they get their first taste of freedom. I was definitely out there having a good time. But deep inside, I, I was not happy. I, I knew there was something missing in my life. Then came this knock at my dorm door, and there stood this tall, muscular young man. He was a wrestler for West Liberty at the time. He was an OVAC champion in high school. He stuck out his hand and he introduced himself to me, Frank Ferguson. Then he said to me, I would like you to, to join my newer Bible study. Could you, could, you, could you join us for Bible study? And I said, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not really into that kind of thing, you know, so. He said, now listen, he said, just come and see. If you don't like it, that's fine. You don't have to come back and get it. Just, just come and see. I said, okay, I'll think about it. Shut the door. When Frank left in the quietness of that dorm room, I felt God speaking to my heart. Joe, just go and see. Oh, no, no, I, I don't want to do that. I'll be too uncomfortable. Joe, he spoke loud. Just go and see. Now, one thing Frank did not do, he did not sit me down and try to persuade me to become a Christian right then and there. He didn't lay out some theological framework of his particular persuasion of the Christian faith. He didn't try to prove to me that Jesus was the Son of God or that he was raised from the dead. But what Frank did do was very similar to what the first disciples did, beginning at John 1.44. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him who Moses mentioned in the law, also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Daniel said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. Come and see. Philip didn't try to prove to Nathanael that Jesus was the Christ. He didn't begin quoting scriptures from the Old Testament concerning the coming of the Messiah. He simply said, come and see. You see, there is a very important element of discovery when it comes to introducing people to Christ. All of the historical documentation and, and the theological exposition, although it, it is very important to the faith, all of those things fall short of generating that essential connection between the person and the Lord. That connection can only come through the discovery process. Come and see. Think about it. What was it that caused people to believe in and trust in and follow Jesus with very little verifiable evidence that he was God's son. What was it about Jesus that caused this kind of effect on people? You see, there was something magnetic about him. When you were in his presence, 
You just felt that his words rang true. They spoke directly to your heart. You, you felt that truth deep within. His manner, his actions, the way he treated people, the way he conducted himself, all spoke to the heart very deeply. That's why Philip said to Nathaniel, you, have, you just have to come and see. Theological discussion and historical documentation can only go so far in convincing someone that Jesus is God's son. It is that relationship connection that speaks to the human heart on a whole different level. When I went to that first Bible study during my freshman year of, of college, I found that the discussion that, that we had on that particular scripture that day, very interesting. But more importantly, I was drawn to the life of Jesus that was flowing out of these young people. I was on the edge of discovering this Jesus that I'd heard about all my life growing up in the Presbyterian church, this Jesus was alive and active in the lives of these young people. And, and still today, all these people are still my friends, and they're good, solid families with good kids. And the, the Lord has blessed them over 30 years, 35 years. That's what spoke to my heart. That is when I began to hear the call of God. Nathaniel, who had great doubts that anyone of any significance could ever come out of Nazareth, experienced the same thing I experienced. Starting at verse 7, we read, Jesus saw Nathaniel coming toward him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite, indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathaniel, Nathaniel, Nathaniel said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said, before Philip called you, when you were there under that tree, I saw you. In other words, Jesus looked into his heart. He had a sense of who Nathaniel was. Nathaniel answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. See, there was a connection that occurred between Nathaniel and Jesus. The life of God, that, that magnetism, that goodness, that love that was flowing out of Jesus drew Nathaniel to him. He connected so much with the Lord. He had such a confirmation in his heart. Nathaniel cried out, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Now what convinced him? Jesus didn't sit down with him and, and go over the, the messianic teachings of the Old Testament. He did not provide proof of his royal line clear back to King David. What he did do was provide that come and see experience. When Nathaniel entered the Lord's presence, there was a connection spiritually. The life of God was in Jesus, and Nathaniel sensed it the power, the love, the joy. What happened to Nathaniel when he took up that invitation to come and see is the same thing that happened to you and me when we encountered Jesus. That life of, of God flowing out of, of, of Jesus drew us to him. Just like young Samuel, Nathaniel began to see who Jesus was and at the same time who he was. Now that's interesting. His perspective changed. As he began to, to understand who Jesus was, this man whose God's love flowed out of him, Nathaniel's perspective on his own life began to change. Now, this is the neat thing about spiritual rebirth. As a person, as a person discovers who Jesus is in that process, that person discovers himself or herself. That person begins to understand a new direction, God's direction for his or her life. New possibilities. New possibilities for life. As young Samuel lay in that tabernacle near the Ark of the Covenant, he didn't realize it, but he was on the edge of discovery. 
as young Peter Marshall crossed that Scottish moor on that foggy night, and as he, he heard his name called out, he stumbled and fell. He didn't realize it. He was on the edge of discovery. As Nathaniel took up that invitation to come and see, Nathaniel didn't realize it, but he was on the edge of who God called him to be. Today, you and I are on that edge, that edge of discovery. What are God's possibilities for you and for me? It's an exciting edge to be on. What are God's possibilities, potential for you and me? Could God's Spirit dwell so powerfully within you and, 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 with, and with me that people who encounter Christ in us find themselves on the edge of discovery? When they come and see, who Christ is in us, will they be moved by the life of God and the love of God shining through us? Not because we have all the answers, not because we know Scripture backwards and forwards, because we don't, but because God's Spirit and love and joy overflows through us. Oh, Lord, may it be so. Amen. Turn to our final hymn, number 259. 